This is the Ripple Effect with your girl KDOT, where we're discussing NBA and NFL and everything in between. Gotta be true to yourself. yourself. In the world, there's nothing else. nothing else. Gotta play the game right, gotta make your path. You scratch, you dig, you lay in your ground, you busting your rounds. Nobody gonna stop you. No ops, no cops, everything about you. Looking good, you good, she good. She good. Y'all people really wanna know the reason. What's that? It's that ripple effect. That's just that ripple, ripple. That's just that ripple effect. What you do, come back, come triple. Back, triple. Hey, what's going on? It's your girl Kate out back in the Ripple Effect. You already know what it is, and you already know the vibes. A shout out to all those supporters. Appreciate y'all. Can't be said enough, really. Day ones, y'all already know what it is. We got to get right into it. Championship games, divisional games. We haven't talked in a minute, right? Well, we already talked about those divisional games, but I'm just saying it's just been crazy. Some, some more predictable. I'm not going to lie. Some more predictable. We already know the Eagles are what they are, right? The Eagles are unstoppable. Every phase of the game, they just got it on lock. Man, everybody was talking all that mess about Jalen Hurts. He's a real true leader. He may not have had the best game, but you know what? That offense is still killing. Like no matter what, still doesn't matter. They just they just get after it. I mean, when you look at the Eagles' defense, man, they look what they did to the Niners. No, no quarterbacks. They got Christian McCaffrey as the QB, at least for one throw. But man, Brock Purdy, man, you really gotta feel for that guy. I mean. I'm going to keep it real with you. I saw a lot of so-called NBA, um, excuse me, <laughs> NFL analysts um, that were, you know, going for the Niners, you know, very confidently, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're going to have your choice. You're going to have your opinion. Cool. You know, but third string quarterback, come on, man. Like, when you look at the team, a game of matchups, we were always talking about this when it comes to the playoffs, right? Matchup for matchup. So if you're talking about the QBs, come on. You really think, uh, come on. Third string quarterback, as good as Brock Purdy has been, you know, like what, last pick in the draft. I mean, Cinderella story, no doubt. Dude's never lost. You got to give him his props. Defense, you already know what these boys are doing, like Nick Bosa and these guys. They're they killing out there. We already know. But the Eagles is different. The Eagles showed you all year what they're about. People who wanted to say it was just the system, it wasn't Jalen, yeah, you know, hurts, and that's annoying. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm kind of glad they sat him like those last two games to kind of show you, like, when they went 0 2, like, yeah, we need our leader, you know, like, it's not just about what you think or whatever's going on in your mind. Like, Jalen Hurts is a leader, he's, he's the engine, man, you know, he, he makes everything go. I mean, whew, A.J. Brown out there. I mean, what these guys are doing is ridiculous all season. They definitely could have been perfect, but it's like I always explain it to a buddy of mine, right? If you're perfect all season, that's like, okay, great, I guess, for media folks and for people to talk about and all these accolades and talk about how it's only been done or hasn't been done since Tom Brady and then they lost in the Super Bowl, you know, for the Giants, you know. But it's like, come on, like, at the end of the day, I feel like when you lose, you learn things about yourself, right? When, you, when you're just winning everything, you're not really learning, like, what your weaknesses are, what you need to get better at. You may become complacent, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, losing, you really do learn, like, through failure, like anybody can attest to if you're paying attention. You, you should be learning from those things. That's how you, you know, um, build character and leadership. That's how a, a true leader emerges through those times, you know? Like I always say, like... You know, who needs a leader when times are good? You know, it's easy to be, you know, great when nobody's tired and everybody's healthy. How about being a leader and being great when everybody's tired and when everybody's injured? You know, that's a whole new ball game. So, shouts out to the Eagles. Props to them. I know some people are probably like, wait, aren't you a Giants fan? You know, same division. Listen, I'm just being objective. I'm calling it the way I see it. And not to mention, I got to give two props that, um, props that there's, you know, two black quarterbacks, you know, playing in the Super Bowl. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I know some people have mixed feelings about it. They don't really care. They just want a good Super Bowl. And yeah, I'm sorry. I, I care about off the <laughs> off the field as well and how, you know, that's a milestone. It, it just goes to show you where we are right now. Um, doesn't mean that we're where we want to be, but you're a, you're a step closer. You know, when you think about um, when it was, you know, two black um, coaches that were in uh, 
in the Super Bowl, you know, Tony Dungy, and I forget the other name, but, you know, those are those are milestones. Those are things we we look towards, or at least we can, you know, tell the next generation about. You know, we can enjoy the things that we have now based off of the work and, you know, everything, and just being able to highlight things like this, you know, from from history. And it's important. So, you know, shout-outs to, you know, everybody involved. Shout-outs, you know, to what a great game we have here, you know. Um, 49ers, man. Yeah, I know a lot of people were saying, like, too bad, you know, they had to just completely just – I mean, how do you not have a QB, right? I mean, I mean that's just – that's almost like just bad luck, you know, from, what is it, Trey Lance to, you know, Garoppolo. almost forgot about him, right? I mean, the 49ers pretty much forgot about him, and then all of a sudden Trey Lance gets hurt, and it's like, hey, Garoppolo, hey, we're – you know, we didn't mean all that we said earlier. We're sorry. We know what you've done in the past. So do you mind? You know, and he does exactly what he, he's got to do. And, you know, unfortunately he gets injured, you know, and that's when Brock Purdy steps up and pretty much goes undefeated. But that's also a testament to the defense. you got to give credit where credit's due. Also the leadership, you know, um, Kyle Shanahan. It's it's been it's been a fun ride, right? But until you met your match, this, that defense is no joke, and that's what makes me concerned going into the Super Bowl, thinking about Patrick Mahomes. And and if you're rooting for the Chiefs, you're kind of thinking to yourself, good thing they have two weeks to rest him. I know they said that he was going through like what five hours of treatment, you know, on that ankle daily, and he's definitely gonna need it because he was hobbled up before the game. I know he got treatment; he wasn't hopping on it too much, but by, like, the middle, you know, of that game, he was definitely hopping around, you know. But what a what a soldier, man. What a warrior. Being able to will himself through that game, still running around, scrambling at the end of the game to make that, that big play. Well, Joseph Asai kind of helped out with that big play, moving it up 15, you know, yards to get that. You know, you can't – I mean, just to go back on that uh, – the guy was obviously visibly upset. Young guy. He's going to learn. He's going to get better. Had a great game. I mean, he was he was a problem, you know, for Patrick Mahomes the whole game, you know. And the one time he saw Patrick, I guess he just wanted to just, you know, you know, put your stamp on the game like anybody would. And everybody wants to step up big. And But sometimes the best thing you can do is, you know, do nothing. You know, definitely make sure he gets out of bounds. But. You definitely got to be aware, and we do got to also understand that running at full speed and understanding all these things, because I'm hearing all these people say all these ridiculous things, honestly, and it just, and I'm not trying to say I played any professional sports, but I used to play, you know, little 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 stuff when I was kid, whatever, but I understand that when you're running full speed, <laughs> it's hard to stop, <laughs> and I'm not talking about, like, full speed when you're out of shape like I wouldn't do it now like no I'd definitely pull something but I'm talking about when I was in shape and I was running full speed you're not stop you're not when you want to stop you're not stopping like it's not happening like you know you're you're gonna knock into something right so I mean I do want people to be aware and conscious of that that it's not exactly easy to run at full speed and think like oh crap is he really is he already out of bounds am I about to draw a penalty right now I want to put that into perspective because I can tell you right now that is not easy no you know it's very easy to judge when you're on your couch eating chips you know getting you know fatter it's, it's not easy drinking the beer a little you know and you're yelling at the screen or you know but at the same time does does that young man need to take accountability? Yes, in which he did. So you got to respect him for that. You know, he definitely poured out a lot of emotions. His teammates consoled him. Some of them were definitely yelling, as we heard, as they were heading back to the locker room. But but you're going to get all that. You're going to get all of that. And, but at the same time, we got to stop acting like one play decides the whole game. And you know what, guys? The officiating, I feel like people just keep talking about it. It's almost like every single game, and even more so when it's – when it's big moments. I mean, if you want to be real, I mean, refs can technically call a holding play probably on every down. I see it all the time. Different angles. It happens, right? 
Now, should the refs be more mindful when they call things, especially in crucial points, or especially if that's going to decide the game? Oh, no, I definitely agree with that. They should definitely, you know, learn to swallow that whistle, you know, pause, you know, or lose it all of a sudden or whatever the case may be. But but we got to st- stop sitting here blaming the refs, you know, for what happened. I know everybody wants to anoint Joe Burrow. I know everybody was calling it Burrow head, and they were kind of just, you know, it, that's how you can tell. It's like whenever things are, like, trendy, when it's, like, cool to be a Cincinnati Bagels fan or be a Joe Burrow fan, everybody's just, like, riding that high. And I totally get it. He's definitely a young talent. But at the end of the day, it's like, come on, man. Like, he definitely didn't have a good game. He threw some interceptions. You can't do that with a Patrick Mahomes team. Like, that can't happen. It's the same thing with a Joe Burrow team, uh, team, obviously, because when they got that ball back, right, and, well, they had the punt, I was thinking to myself, like, man, Joe Burrow is really going to, you know, because you got Jamar Chase, you got Mixon. I know Boyd was out, but, yo, you got Higgins. Like, these dudes are ballers, playmakers. I seen them all three in an interview, and, you know, they're just as humble as can be. And very just, they're very complimentary in, in terms of they don't care who eats that night. Like, you know, as long as, like, if if Jamar is getting double teamed, then he knows, all right, Higgins got it. You know, Higgins going to have it this game. Mixon's going to have it. This. It just doesn't matter. And they're kind of like that with each other. They're happy to see each other ex- succeed, which is which is dangerous. I mean, that's great for them, but it's so dangerous if you're, if you're the other team. And then when he threw that pick, I'm like, come on, guys. So who are you going to blame there, right? There was no refs involved in that. Like, that's – it happens, you know. And and I know everybody's ready to anoint Joe Burrow, and we can start ranking quarterbacks right now. But I'm not going to say that he's better than Patrick Mahomes. I think that he has more weapons than Patrick Mahomes. Like, you, I mean, some people would argue, you know, when he had Tyreek Hill, people were kind of like, oh, Ty- Tyreek Hill was the reason why he could do all those crazy moves and all these different things. And and that's the beauty of watching greatness, <laughs> you know, because you can tell Patrick Mahomes was not content with just being labeled at whatever it is that you thought he was in 2022 because, you know, or the 2020, um, 21, 22 season. I mean, going into the 22, 23 season, you can see his ascension. And it's just better decision-making, I've noticed. Or even everybody else I've noticed, and I've even heard them notice the same thing. He will make the easy passes now. He's not looking for that big play every time. You know what that is? That's making adjustments. Yo, I don't have Tyreek Hill. I can't just throw it up and say, yo, he's down there somewhere. No, I have to actually, you know, be very decisive. Teams already know that Kelsey's my old reliable. He, they already know that Travis Kelsey, Mahomes connection. So what are they going to do? They're going to double Kelsey. Smart, right? Well, here's the thing. Mahomes is not just relying on Kelsey anymore. If you noticed, he didn't even, what was it, one touchdown? I mean, Patrick Mahomes is not only throwing from the pocket, right, Obviously, because he has to, he can't do too much, you know, mobility. He was kind of saving that juice for the end, but he showed you he still had wheels. He still had more to give you. He was just being conservative, you know, and just prioritizing because when the play's not there, the play's not there. He wasn't trying to just, you know, just fit the ball the ball in, you know, just in any aware, just so Kelsey could try to get it. No, he was dumping it off. He was making the smart moves, making those smart passes. And to me, that's what makes him a re- an even better quarterback than he already was because he can make those adjustments. And look where, he, look where it landed him, right back in the Super Bowl, right? They can't say that Joe Burrow, you know, he – keeps beating on Patrick Mahomes because nobody wants to sit there and admit and sit there and say, I didn't hear anybody say, but, yo, you know Joe Burrow has way more weapons. Way more weapons than Patrick Mahomes does, right? Nah, y'all wasn't paying attention to that? Okay. But I'm going to say it (laughs) because that's just what it is. But those those games, I mean, it definitely was some nail biters at the end of that game. I mean, in the beginning, you were kind of like, oh, uh, 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 is the Chiefs going to kind of run away with this? And Joe Burrow was like, nope, slow down, calm down. You know, Joe Cool came in the game, let you guys know what's up. But I remember, like, even 
a couple years ago when the Chiefs mainly had that problem on defense, when that was like the biggest issue. It was like, man, we're going to score enough points, but is our defense going to give up too much? You know what I mean? Where that's going to be the difference. I remember when that was the issue. Yo, Chris Jones getting after the quarterback. That was another thing. I mean, when you think about it, folks, when you have when you have a pass rusher like that, that is hard to stop. That's what's going to be really interesting with the Eagles, too, like I had mentioned earlier with the defense. Those are the teams that are standing last. When you can get after the quarterback, ooh, it's a problem. It's a problem. Uh, just to kind of update you guys on what's been going on, um, we really need to talk about that. <laughs> so Kellen Moore out Dallas, right? So they're going to try to make it work, obviously. Um, Jerry Jones already told you. Mike McCarthy, he's our guy. He wants him to be there for apparently 19 years or however long. You know, then <laughs> one of the coaches that he had there before, Laney. I don't remember his name, but anyway. So they're obviously trying to shake things up. They're trying to figure out how they can make Dak Prescott better, right? Some people think that he's at his ceiling. I kind of do too. But this is, I would say, probably a last-ditch effort. Some people are even saying that, hmm, since, since Dak – doesn't and it's not just Dak, it's just the offense doesn't seem to be responding anymore, you know, to the offensive coordinators. And you can kind of see that around the league that may be having the same trouble. That their de the defense is good, solid, but the offense is stagnant, and that's the reason why they're not able to ascend to the next level, whether it's getting to the playoffs, getting further into the playoffs, or obviously arriving at the big dance, which is the Super Bowl. That's where you're trying to do. I mean, that's the whole point. You know, of summer camp, when you come in, training camp, and you come in and, you know, the coaching staff, they have a whole, you know, mantra. They have a whole – it's a whole thing that they have. It's a whole program set up for you to be playing in February, to be playing a meaningful game in January, obviously, and to be playing in February. That's kind of the whole point. Um, another team that's going through that right now is the Chargers, Right. And all the people were already trying to anoint Justin Herbert, right? And don't get me wrong, he's a talent for sure. But how many times are we going to keep going through the whole dance? But, you know, he's great, but we're going to keep, you know, blaming other pieces. And after a while, we got to take some accountability, right? And so, okay, Callum Moore not responsive with the Dallas, you know, offense and what they have going on. Okay, they're going to put him on the Chargers. Right, to see if Justin Herbert will be responding more so to him. Now, that's what they want to do. It's kind of like, okay, um, another case of what's going on around the league is uh, Brian Leftwich. Buccaneers, right? OC just, just was relieved of his duties. Last time I checked, he did win a Super Bowl, you know, with them, with the Bengals. I mean, excuse me, Bengals, with the Buccaneers. It's the B thing, you know. <laughs> but but yet he's still looking for a job. Now, he better land a job as an OC or a coach. Otherwise, it's like, so we're just moving guys around that haven't really won anything. And the guy who has been accomplishing, who has won something, we're just going to discredit him because he was working with Tom Brady even though Tom Brady was in a new system and it wasn't just, you know, that's kind of annoying. You know, we can call it what it is, but that's a little annoying. That's a little frustrating thing. Um, but it is going to be a long off season. Hopefully not too long. You know, we, um, April is coming up where move where more moves are going to be made, you know, um, in terms of the draft. So People are going to want to, you know, tidy up those teams and get the players that they want to get in so that way they can get the right culture and, you know, and start building and moving on to the future once they get some, you know, more August or September, August, you know, in July. Uh, 
But yeah, oh my God, I, I'm just sitting here just thinking about the Super Bowl and I have the Chiefs. I, w- I really would like the Chiefs to win for a number of reasons. I don't like the disrespect. I don't like how when a team is not literally in the Super Bowl for like a year, you know, people want to lose their minds, you know, with the disrespect and not realizing what the Chiefs had have built. I get it. People get sick of greatness. It's weird. Like, you know, the Golden State Wars, people are like, oh. Like, you know, it's like they could just get bored with it. Like, oh, like LeBron playing 20 years. Like, okay, he's about to, you know, be the number one scoring. Like, oh, like people just get bored of it. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. It's like, don't do that. But that does not mean by any means necessary that <laughs> I could be wrong. And you know what? I very well could be because – this this game will not be easy. We already know it doesn't matter how many treatments that Patrick Mahomes will receive between now and then. He's not going to be 100%. And just knowing that he's not going to be 100% is, is troubling. It's definitely worrisome. I mean, the quarterback position is the most important position. And that's a guy that's not going to be at 100%. You're going you're gonna to have to worry about that defense. Um, it's they got to keep that a low-scoring game, I'm going to say. They're going to have to because they already know what to do. They're going to use the, the relatively same formula in doubling Kelsey. And when that happens, that's going to be really hard. It's, it, I really hope there's not going to be a lot of three and outs, but I can I can kind of see that coming, to be honest with you. Just simply because that would just not be, it just won't be easy. It'll be very trying. Um, he's going to have to do things with that ankle that he never wants to ever do again because he's going to be paying, he's going to be playing in a certain amount of pain, you know, in order to keep up. And that's just the reality of it because you can already see what type of pain that he was playing in, you know, just to get past the Bengals. But it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be fun. You know, Rihanna's doing the Super Bowl. A lot of people are happy about that. I'm happy about it. It's nice to see her back. You know, I love that song, Lift Me Up. You know, it came out, you know, perfect timing. You know, the Black Panther sequel, all that, great. Um, I don't know if there's going to be anybody else during the Super Bowl. But from what I know, that's that's pretty much it. And you know, we got to talk a little bit about the NBA because the NBA is here. You know, they're already starting to do their all-star game. And it's like, I remember I used to get real hyped about the all-star game. And it's not that I'm not hyped about it. It's just kind of like, I just feel like some of the players that should be there are not. And the players that are, you know, it's the whole thing. And then, excuse me, and then how they divvy it up and how some of the players get a vote, the media gets a vote, the fans, etc. Um, it's kind of hard to say, like, who should get a vote and who shouldn't, you know. I hate, like, having to, like, decide, like, you know, who am I to sit there and say, oh, they don't deserve, you know. I mean, the <laughs> the All-Star game really is for the fans. Like, let's be honest. it That's who it's for. So, can't take, take that um out of it. But at the same time, it's like the NBA puts together a project, uh, you know, a product all season long that people seem to buy into. So, you know, maybe it's not necessarily for the fans because half the time, I, honestly, the people that actually af- can afford to go to those games, I don't think those are the people who are voting, to be honest with you. Um, j- I'm just saying, you know, people who can afford can afford to go to those events are probably going to go regardless of the fact, you know. I mean, obviously you want to have some, you know, the popular players in, you know, the players that make headlines, but then those are the players that probably should be in, right? I'm just, you know, just kind of just throwing it out there. But some people are going back and forth about the game last night with the Lakers and LeBron and his reaction and how he was on his knees in the court, you know, pause, you know, but you you know what I'm saying. If you was watching the game, you know what I'm talking about. Don't take it there, please. Um... You know, some people think he was overreacting and that was just a regular season game. And it's like, stop. Stop. Like, that, stop. I just need some people to be a little bit more self-aware and understand when they're being so hypocritical. 
because I hear people always talking about how players aren't emotionally invested in the game. All they care about is their money. You know, they're just millionaires and we're supposed to care about you know what they feel what they think you know they're they're not really wrapped up in the game like the fans are and here you have a guy whole billionaire you know even kids are setting themselves up now so they can be to carry on that generational wealth and he's on his knees like visibly upset passionate about the game because he did not get the call that he was supposed to get. Because, quite frankly, he was right. He didn't get slapped, you know, in his forearm as he was going up by Jason Tatum. Um, Jason Tatum smartly answered, I don't really remember what happened. Um, yeah, it all went by so fast. Yeah, I'm sure it did, Jay. <laughs> I'm sure it did. But anyway, it's it's like really got like, come on. Like, the the guy really can't win. So he can't be mad and upset because he puts in all this work. What did he score? Like 41 points. I'm over people, man. <laughs> over you guys. I'm over you guys. You guys are, you can't be pleased. Like you've proven that on a daily basis. You could not be pleased. It doesn't matter what anybody does whatsoever. Because he could have easily just walked off that game and just say, you know what? I'm going to go to my mansion and have some sushi and wine tonight. Forget this. It's whatever, you know. I'm going to pass the scoring title. It don't matter. Probably not going to get to the play, barely get to the play in. You know, who cares? You know, we're probably not going to do anything at the trade deadline. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, you really want that guy on your team? Like, he's telling you he's here. He's a leader. He's not just wasting his time. You think he's on diets. You think he's in the gym regularly the way he is, putting all this time and effort into a game that he not only loves, he, he respects, and it got him out of poverty. <laughs> like, I mean, he's put his whole life into this. I mean, who are you to sit there and judge the way he reacts to it, Chandler Parsons? Like, Really? Like, you know what I mean? Like, just making these, like, little quips every now and again, you know, of guys that are still in the league and who are made far more, you know, of an impression than he will ever. You know what I mean? And it's like, I hate to, like, say that or really go there, but it's like, sometimes you kind of have to. Because that's just, that's that's crap, man. Like, nah. Like, that's what you got to say to that. That's just crap. You know, Stop getting on people for being, you know, for caring about the game. Like stop, because then what? What? What do you? What do you want? You want a bunch of guys that kind of don't care whether they win or lose. You rather them laughing on the sidelines, or you let them? You you rather them at the end of the bench? Like you guys comment literally on everything this man does. It, so it doesn't even matter what he does. Stop. Appreciate greatness. I promise you, when it's going, you're going to feel some type of way. And once he's going, he's gone. You know, I feel like that with every other superstar. You know, whether, you know, it doesn't even matter the sport. You're going to miss them. Talk all the crap you want. You're going to miss them. I promise you. Aaron Rodgers, same deal. Even though, you know, he's, you know, a little arrogant, you know, and he's could be annoying and holding the team hostage and all these different things about what he wants to do with his career, you're going to miss him. I promised you. Arrogance and all, you're going to miss him. You're going to miss Tom Brady. You know, it's unfortunate what's been going on in his personal life, and hopefully he gets it together and, and just pay, plays another season because he knows he wants to. I think he's just looking for the right fit. You know, and I'm sure he's looking for, you know, um, clarity in his own life. You know, he's going. he's been through a lot. You know, like he said, he's a 45-year-old man. He's got a lot of things going on. Totally respected. I get it. But lay off, you know, like lay off. LeBron wants to be emotional about a regular season game that he puts a lot of work and effort into it. More power to him. Maybe you should be doing that in your own craft. Maybe you should care more about what you do. Maybe it'll make you better. If it doesn't, <laughs> well, it's your life, right? <laughs> Guys, I only ever ask you to <laughs> remember one thing, right? Losses equals life lessons.
Peace. Gotta be true to yourself. yourself. In a the world there's nothing else. nothing else. Gotta play the game right, gotta make your path. You scratch, you dig, you lay in your ground. You busting your rounds, nobody gonna stop you. No ops, no cops, everything about you. Looking good, you good, she good. She good. Y'all people really wanna know the reason. What's that? It's that ripple effect. That's just that ripple, ripple. That's just that ripple effect. What you do, come back, come triple. Back, triple. This is the Ripple Effect with your girl K-Dot, where we're discussing NBA and NFL and everything in between.